Andrew McGann for Sabair MMA here at UXC standing alongside Dylan Douglas and Dylan Clay Gita has his burp you projectile vomit after a fight what's oh, yeah. that about? Uh, I think it's just low blood sugar like uh, happened in Kumite as well as tonight and it just automatically comes there's no you know, no like, stop no there, it's not even like you can't tell it's going to come it's just you know and then you can't stop it but think it's maybe the nervous energy leaving your yeah, body? Yeah, I think it actually is. Like, uh, at Kumite, I actually cried. And uh, it was just over something stupid. So I think it was just like, feelings and emotions coming through. But for someone like that, you didn't look nervous in the cage. Your stand-up was very nice, throwing some... Um, I'll get slagged for using the word exotic again, but exotic kicks in your, uh, in your arsenal. Where's that coming from? Uh, I just started doing random stuff one day. I watched Anthony Pettis do the cartwheel kick. End up adding more and more. Uh, end up adding it so you can do it the other way to throw a hill. Try to throw it, didn't catch it. Uh, then actually, there's more stuff I've been working on. There's a lot more stuff, but I didn't get a chance to do it because I just wanted to go where I wanted to go with this. And, and then it. strip back all of those techniques. One in, simple one, a, low, uh, a leg kick. Your right leg kick was just finding a home repeatedly. Once you hit it, he'd buckle on it a little bit. Were you not a little bit tempted to follow that through? Not really, because I knew that as soon as like that air leg kick hit and he turned, if he turned back and again too quick, I'm getting hit automatically. So I just thought, throw ass leg kick, make him think, see if he does come for it. If he doesn't, I'll go for it. If he does, I'll duck down, get the attack down. On the ground, there seemed to be one only sticky situation. Uh, was there a tap at the end of the first round? We thought, looking at it uh, on our camera, it looked like he was about to tap. But in real time, we weren't too sure. Did you feel a tap or was it nothing? I didn't feel a tap. Yeah, put that to bed. <laughs> uh, finally, in the third round as well, it seemed like he was uh, clutching at straws, gasping for a heel hook. Nothing on at all? No. Uh, I'm not used to throwing on my own knee bars, calf crushes. I love knee bars and calf crushes to pieces. And uh, I knew he wouldn't have got it. My legs are too big for his arms to control. And I guess it's just too big for him. Earlier on, uh, while you were warming up, um, Martin McLaughlin pointed you out and he said that boy is going to be a fantastic interview if you get him so far you're proving us right if you don't mind me saying I remember seeing something on Facebook about how martial arts has saved your life mm. it's a very good story if you'd like to share it uh, it was just I ended up dealing with I always dealt with that sort of depression and uh, like it never really came through until everything started to become real like I say become real but uh, like it started to become everything was coming on like I was growing up and it just all hit me again. Uh, I was really deep with self-harming, suicidal thoughts. I actually tried to kill myself before, uh, but I ended up just stopping it because I thought, what's the point of me doing this? I'll end up having another fight. And if I go in there and I get battered by this boy, I'll go on to the next one, I'll batter him, and I'll take the aggression out in training and enjoy myself in the cage. The man standing behind the camera there seems to be the biggest influence of all, Rodney Moore. Um, uh, like hearing someone so young as yourself speak like that so openly is uh, very admirable but if you could talk about what Rodney has done for you Rodney just he talked through me at whatever and like uh he was one of the first people to come up to me he was one of the first people to speak to me about about it uh Alan Falpott speak to me a lot about it as well uh everybody in that gym they're just we are a big family there's no doubt even though Rodney's the dad he's still he's still he's I believe but more grander now he's getting there uh but Everybody in that gym, especially Rodney, if that gym wasn't there, I don't. I think a lot of people in Balmain wouldn't be doing stuff like this. They wouldn't be making names for themselves. To finish off, you just broke some exclusive news there. Alan Philpott was actually nice to someone, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> who, who would have thought it? No, he's nice sometimes. He just, although after he's nice, he's, you know, he's not nice. Like that's what happens in a gym. Like you get a compliment, but that comes with two slags. Yeah. Dylan, thank you very much for your time. You're a very well-spoken young man. Um, to speak so openly about all of these issues is uh, very admirable and hopefully you're encouraging people themselves to come forward if they have issues as well. Thank you very much. We appreciate the time. Yeah, yep, go ahead. Uh, I'd like to do a big shout-out for my gym, uh, all three of my sponsors, uh, HSAS, Balamina, Bronze Tone and Bronze Tanning and Beauty, Balamina and Patsy's Barbershop for everything they've done and... Patsy's Barbershop and Bronstone and Tan have been with me for about two years now and they've just worked that hard with me. Uh, big shout out to my family, uh, to Alan Philpott, to Race McKee for uh, watching me every time I trained, every time I sparred, adding wee bits to it and my stand up was nothing like that ever. Uh, like I was just Race telling me to follow everything up and I guess I'd like to help with that in pride tonight and uh, Shout out to my aunt Nene, rest in peace, and 
my mum, my dad, my granny and my granda and all my family. Thank you very much. Thank you. Appreciate the time. See you soon. <laughs>